Hi, my name is Darla and I'm a producer here at Pixar Animation Studios. You know, Pixar is made up of just a crazy combination of people. There's mad scientists and dancers and animators and uh, just all kinds of unique individuals. And uh, most of those unique individuals weren't the most popular in high school and junior high. They just weren't. It's just the way it works. Thank goodness we hung around and found each other and created this familial tribe of people that's created this unprecedented team that makes movie magic. And so because of that, because of where we all came from, we wanted to share a message of hope with all of you. I knew at a young age that I was very different. I started out as sort of a tomboy and I liked to play with the boys and I liked to play with boy things. I walked wrong, I talked wrong, I wasn't interested in the right things. I love show tunes. I brought my sister's doll to show and tell. I remember just, um, just feeling not sure how to do it. I was able to kind of compartmentalize being gay. I always felt like if I don't want this hard enough, maybe it'll go away. It was sort of all I could do just to keep it under wraps, keep it hidden. One day I was at the dinner table and uh, I was kind of just joking and I made the, like this gesture <laughs> and uh, my brother said, uh, dude, that's really gay. And I was like, no, it's not. And then my parents were like, yeah, it's kind of gay. I really was faced with this idea that I was really going to be in trouble. So I felt like if I was a lesbian, my father wouldn't love me anymore. So I had a choice to make. Would I be true to myself or would I live a life of lies? I couldn't be myself and show as much of myself as I could. There's a, a sense of invisibility when you're gay because you don't want to step out. You don't want to show too much. Not everybody is Kurt on Glee. All of my friends from my Catholic elementary school got to go to an all-girls Catholic high school. But my mother wouldn't let me go. She wanted me to go to a public school so that I'd be around boys. The name of the game, I guess, was to fit in. So I acted tough and I put on, the, put on a show. Every time I would go on the field or on the court, I always felt ostracized from the rest of the team. All of the people in the stands were like, Dyke and Lesbo and get off the field. I got harassed verbally and physically. They'd call me faggot and push me around. It escalated to be pretty violent, not only inside the campus of the school, but outside. I was completely scared and confused. I thought that being gay meant being alone and being isolated and, and, and constantly living in fear. It got to a point where I was just so scared of everything and, and of everyone that I wouldn't actually talk to anyone. And that was a very, very terrifying and just really, really sad, sad feeling. I didn't want to be alone. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to make sense out of the world. I felt full of self-hatred. I started getting these thoughts that if I'm not around, no one would really miss me, no one would really care. Someone interrupted me from jumping off the roof of my dorm. I am so grateful to that person today because things got so much better and I wouldn't have known it if they hadn't stopped me. I would have missed so much of my life. I would have missed an entire future that was genuine. I would have missed an authentic way of living. And making your own friends for the first time. Making art, discovering new music. Uh, going to birthday parties with my daughter's friends. A dance group, which was super cool. I got to travel with them. Walking into a gay bar and feeling like you really belonged. I would have missed great friends, great relationships. The most amazing experiences that you can have with a friend. I would have missed meeting Colin, my amazing <laughs> cube man. <laughs> I would have missed my nieces being born, who are the cutest things ever. Finding my dream job, finding my dream city, finding my dream partner. The first time I ever got to dance with my boyfriend in public. Meeting the love of my life. Meeting my wife. Getting to experience what that kind of relationship is like. I don't think I'd be as close to my family now. I wouldn't have, you know, seen my mother come around. When I, my mom and I talked about it, I felt this huge sense of relief. You feel it. You don't, you're don't. you not just saying it in, inside your head. You're actually feeling it right here. That was... blew me away. Coming out was just like the beginning. My life was the kind of life I didn't even know was an option. I finally started thinking about what being gay was going to be for me. I just started by realizing that I had to love myself first. And it took a lot. I think... I think it just, just took time. I found a new me, 
and it was the right me this time. I started to f uh, find that I wasn't alone and my situation was not that different. I started to meet people who gave me so much acceptance and love. People that I would have completely missed out on had it not been for the fact that I was gay. I got to get married to the love of my life. We just made six years uh, last week, and um, we have a cat, and we have a lovely little one-bedroom place that is ours, and um, I get to walk up those nine steps and open the door and know that he's home, and I get to kiss him and hug him when I walk in the door, and that, that brings me so much joy. It's been one of the biggest blessings of my life. I've met such wonderful people. It's made me such a stronger person to be gay. And there, there's nothing I would do, nothing I would do to change that now. Don't let anyone tell you you're less than zero just because you're gay. There are lots of people out here who care about you and want to see you live. So please stay strong and stay in it. It gets better. Tell yourself over and over again, that you're okay, because you are. And know that, that no matter how hard things can seem, that you're connected to everybody else going through that same thing. You will find your place and it will get better, I promise. I can definitely tell you, and I didn't believe it, I didn't think it would ever get better, but it really, really does get better. Focus on the future, don't focus on the problems that you're going through right now, focus on the greatness of your life that's going to become. Find someone, anyone that you can confide in, that you think will support you and help you and love you unconditionally. And if that person is not helpful, then drop them immediately and go to another person. Know that somewhere out there, you can make an, a connection with someone else who feels just like you do, or similar to how you do, and wants you around and wants to give you a big hug and tell you that everything's all right and that it does get better. If I could just come through the screen right now and just give you a big hug and tell you it gets better, I would totally do that. I promise you that it not only gets better, but it's so, it's so much more than you could possibly imagine. It is so beautiful, the things that life has waiting for you. It will get better. It gets 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 really better. Everything gets better. It gets better. It, it gets great.